Did you dream last night? Are you conscious? Dream or nightmare? Freud says dreams are the imagery of a wish or impulse that has since been repressed. A dream derives from your real life, so it is the reflection of what you pursue in the reality. In 2006, a great film director Kon Satoshi from Asian island country of Japan brought us the most realistic dreaming experience on screen. His last film Paprika, filled with a gorgeous ride of future shock ideas and brightly animated images, takes us on exploration of human desires and consciousness in a bewildering ride, intermingled with dreams, more dreams, and waking life. There are films that you cannot 100% understand when you watch it for the first time. Paprika is one of them. In fact, all Satoshi's films demand to be watched sitting up straight. Perfect Blue, Tokyo Godfather, and Millennial Actress. For Paprika, at first, it feels weird, bizarre, unreal, and utopian. The characters and storylines start out of nowhere. Dream and reality seem to be blended, and the world grabs you from the get-go in a series of flowing images and transitions that don't follow any logic. But indeed, this is exactly what Satoshi intends to pursue. Unlike his previous works, where he always knows the ending before writing, the dream has no boundaries or rules, and he lets his imagination run wild, using whatever improvised ideas he comes up with during the creative process. The opening scene is a good example. A clown drives a small car out of darkness, which symbolizes your subconscious, and then suddenly a hilarious circus event emerges from it. You're starting to dream, and Satoshi decides to add this scene to mimic a real dream. The creators do not know how the movie ends, so Satoshi hopes that audience won't be able to figure it out soon when they watch this film. He invokes an atmosphere of a dream while creating functional plot that will stand on its own as entertainment. That's why the audience enjoy the visually stunning movie, even if the story feels a little all over the place. Although obscure, Paprika still has its full plot. No, actually, the main and subplot. To understand them better, let's review the family tree and simplify the story structure. DC Mini is an experimental therapeutic device that allows therapists to enter and record patients' subconscious dreams, collecting their dreams for analysis. Atsuko, Tokita, and Chief, also known as Shima, are the trio who invent, experiment, and operate DC Mini. Paprika, the DC Mini Dream World alter ego of Atsuko, performs psychotherapy for Mr. Konokawa, a police detective plagued by recurring nightmares. He is also an old friend of Chief. Himolo is a research assistant of Tokita. Osanai and Chairman are the two antagonists of this film, as they stole DC Mini for their own desires. The main goal in this film is to first. Find out who steals DC Mini and stop the culprit from misusing it and controlling human dreams. And second, help Mr. Konokawa overcome his psychological trauma caused by unsolved murder case and guilt for his best friend's death. Now, let's see how Satoshi lays out these two storylines in the film Paprika. The film begins with varieties of movie scenes that take place in Mr. Konokawa's dreams. Three DC Mini prototypes are stolen in reality. At this time, Himlo disappears by coincidence, which makes him a suspect. On her way to find him, Atsuko's mind is intruded, so she got confused about dream with reality. Atsuko is called again to help Mr. Konokawa, who is still struggling with his nightmares and trauma. Meanwhile, Tokita enters Himlo's dream to understand why he steals DC Mini or if he is the man behind all of this. Then two dreams start to merge, and Paprika sees Tokita in a dream, and he becomes part of the parade. In order to save Tokita, Atsuko wakes up from Detective Konokawa's dream and enters Himlo's dream, 
only to find the dream was taken over and controlled by chairman. Himuro is nothing but a shell. Atsuko wakes up and decides to discuss a solution with Chief. Unfortunately, she's still in the dream, and she's called by Osanai, who works for chairman. At the same time, Detective Konakawa is still in his own dream, so these two dreams start to merge again. Detective Konakawa saved Paprika from hands of Chairman and Osanai. They run back to his own subconscious, but Chairman can manipulate dreams and brings them back to his most frightening and recurring nightmare. But this time, he knows what to do. He shot Osanai and broke the fear that haunted him for so long. They both wake up, or they think they are weak at this time until they see the large Japanese doll outside the window. Yes. They're still in a dream. They see meaning intrude everyone's mind, and their desires come true in a large dream. The dream world is becoming darker. The chairman pronounces that he can control dreams, even death. He has become the lord of darkness. Paprika projects herself as the image of a small child, who is swallowing up the darkness and shadowy figure of the chairman. Light returns to the city. Detective Konakawa is recovered from his fears and anxiety. It does get a bit of confusing, and it's easy to get lost in the middle of dream reality riddle, as the dreaming world Satoshi created does not have any defined rule as that in Inception, which of course is a more well-known form of dream by Christopher Nolan. So next, I'd like to talk about how different these two films are. Inception was released four years after Paprika. And since then, these two films have always been mentioned and compared side by side, as a few sequences appear in both films are too similar to be a coincidence. But even so, I personally have never found these two films to be largely related. If you watch them close enough, the two directors aim to expose different aspects of dreams using different filmmaking techniques. Sincerely. Satoshi's improvisational imagination makes audience feel a little caught off guard. Compared to Inception, Paprika keeps its dreams more bizarre and more dreamlike. Visually, in order to pursue different atmosphere, Paprika is more colorful and vivid, while the main color of Inception, blue, runs through the entire film. The distinction between any two scenes in these two films is the proof to Satoshi's style of visual spectacle, pushed to its absolute limits and then beyond. From this perspective, the anime genre is indeed an advantage. Structurally, Paprika cannot beat Inception, where the rules of the dream world are very well defined with intricate designs. By the way, I take my hat off to my fair director, Christopher Nolan, for his super brain and imagination. Thematically, Satoshi goes back, depicts and discusses the meaning of Freud's dream, and hides many of the obscure culturally related details in the film for audience to savor. Now, I can't wait to share with you what I find in these details. If there's one thing you can't get out of mind after watching this film, it must be the parade scene. Random objects come alive, weird soundtrack, colorful utopian world. The parade is reminiscent of the Hundred Yokai Parade scene, often depicted in Japanese art, based on Japanese folklore. It is also a satire on all the bad phenomena in Japanese society in an anthropomorphic way. High suicide rate, blind worship of varieties of religions, escapism, and chasing dream. Turning children into money machines. Bourgeois photos. Couch potato. Politician fighting for power. Surrealism meets thought-provoking original ideas in these grotesque parade scenes. Also, have you paid attention to these scenes in the film? Paprika wears a bathrobe while treating Mr. Konakawa in a dream. And later, he said how comfortable it was to be treated. When Paprika is trying to wake up Chief by doing this, this is Chief's reaction. In another scene, Paprika chases Tokita into the movie screen 
only to get a hand of this unknown liquid. Then she turns to see Mr. Konokawa holding the sex doll as if he's about to do something to it. Satoshi does not explicitly mention the specific implementation of psychotherapy, but it's not difficult to infer that Paprika engages in sex or flirting with her patients in their cure. In the original novel by Tsuji Yastaka, Paprika draws on some of the ideas from Freud. For example, she states that one important method is the transferring of her own emotions via DC Mini into the patient's subconscious. This has the effect of turning something neutral into something pleasant and desirable, the most relaxing state. That way, Paprika will be able to decipher the origin of the patient's illness. As you can see, Satoshi depicts these details in a very obscure way. There's a lot more to see if you want to go deeper. So much for all this analysis. Director Satoshi is very smart and talented. Yeah, it's just a dream, so why not just let it go wild and wash you like a dream? Incredibly imaginative, with vivid animations and thought-provoking projections. Paprika leaves me unsettled, amazed, and fascinated. Alright, thank you for watching until the end. Please give a thumb up if you like this video and subscribe to this channel. Well, we're appreciating the score for the rest of the video. I hope you all have a great dream. Thanks for watching.